I'm Josh Fulham. I've been a filmmaker in New York for about nine years now. Uh, I recently finished up my third written produced, second directed feature, Catch-22, based on the written story by Shawnee Shakru, which I am shamelessly plugging here by having set the key art as my desktop wallpaper. And uh, a few years ago, I wrote a book called Filmmaking the Hard Way, which is a case study on the making of my first feature, All God's Creatures. And for some reason or another, Film Courage just thinks that qualifies me to talk to you about five things I wish I'd have known before I made a feature film with no money. So the first thing I wish I'd have known before I tried to make a film with no money would have been that no one is going to give you money <laughs> to make your first feature film. Uh, and rightfully so. Why would anyone give you money to do something that is incredibly difficult without having proven that you're capable of having done it, uh, or capable of doing it rather. And, you know, that's just kind of the way it works. You're gonna have to, to get, to, to, to create that piece of work that demonstrates it's something you can do, you're going to have to do it with little to no resources. And, you know, I think a lot of filmmakers walk into this stuff, um, you know, for any number of reasons, be it they have a strong body of work in some other um, aspect of the industry, music videos, they have some short film that crushed it at a film festival, none of that matters. None of that is even remotely comparable to building a, a, a feature length 90 plus minute film uh, from the ground up and actually seeing it to fruition. Um, it's 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 impossible. It's boy. It's truly by every film you see, regardless of the scope, is a fucking miracle. So, <laughs> um, you know, you, you need to understand that you're going to go into this, and you're going to have to scrape together whatever resources you need to accomplish telling your story uh, with and from basically nothing, and just accept that. <laughs> so the second thing I wish I'd have known going into making All God's Creatures would be that. Uh, this is kind of the flip side to the first point, because you're not going to have the resources that you need or want or whatever to, to make this thing, you need to embrace the fact that you have those constraints and, and accept them. And, and, you know, that acceptance can lead to things that are actually creative benefits to, to the project. And the story I always tell as an example of this is on All God's Creatures, we needed this claw machine that in the script was supposedly in this movie lobby. And, you know, we of course shopped long and hard to find a, a movie theater that would let us shoot there that happened to have a claw machine. And of course we couldn't find that with no money. So the whole time I, we had been failing to find that, I had been walking by a deli at the corner, uh, at the end of my street, um, up in Spanish Harlem where I lived at the time. And this deli happened to have a claw machine outside uh, on the sidewalk in front of the store and um, you know I walked by one day and I was like why in the hell don't we just shoot the thing here we you know, we have to shoot this film in a couple weeks anyways we gotta figure something out let's just do this and at the time it seemed like a concession but in hindsight it you know the, the, the film is a very dark gritty New York uh, story and, and shooting that scene which is like you know a, a, a big spark in the love story between the two main characters, such an important pivotal scene. Uh, shooting that in in the gritty aesthetic of a of a New York sidewalk in Spanish Harlem is so much more in line with what the film is and needed to be than it would have been had we shot it in a movie theater lobby that was brightly lit and and you know beautiful or whatever uh, the aesthetic of that would have been. So, you know, having constraints can be a benefit as long as you accept it and. Um, you know, are open to using those constraints in a way that gets you to the finish line um, in a way you can deal with. <laughs> Number three on this little list is the value, as, as the producer on the project, the value of the bargaining chip you have in giving someone their first feature film credit. You know, in, in the same way that you're doing this project, uh, if it is your first feature, uh, for the the purpose of showing that you're capable of, of of making a feature, that it is something that you know you can do, uh, the same thing goes for every single person that you'll need to make it. Um, 
the bulk of people, both actors and crew, probably, are going to be doing this for way less money to no money uh, because it's their first feature. And, and that, on a resume, is a huge thing. Particularly, God forbid, the film plays a few festivals that are even remotely reputable. Like, even if it doesn't get that far, <laughs> it's still having a feature film on your resume uh, shows that you can do it. And that's a very powerful thing that you can use when trying to talk, cajole, weasel <laughs> entire feature film's worth of work out of uh, you know whatever crew positions you need um, or actors to, to get the job done. So number four is expect to learn. Um, I started in the entertainment industry as an actor and while doing that instead of waiting for the phone to ring uh, I chose to start producing little off-Broadway shows uh, as a way to create work for myself. And, you know, so I had to teach myself how to produce things. And that was pretty much a trial and error thing, you know, fucking things up <laughs> and figuring it out as I went. And um, while producing, I began to see, find it difficult rather to find material that I liked that I thought was good for little or no money. And for that reason, I started writing. And that required reading Blake Snyder's Save the Cat to start and a million other books. And and trial and error and writing a lot of bad things to um, be able to create uh, a screenplay that I believed in enough to produce. And uh, after having done that a few times, I decided why not try to direct this thing. And to do that, I had to teach myself how to direct and figure that out by probably fucking it up a few times. And on this latest feature, I you know, decided I was going to edit it and that that would be a much cheaper option than going out and paying and, and someone else to do that. So I had to teach myself how to edit, um, at least, uh, proficiently enough to, 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 to put together a, a feature length film. And in doing that, I taught myself how to color correct and, and, um, you know, the beauty of being a filmmaker uh, present day is that there are YouTube tutorials <laughs> and things you can Google to figure out how to do just about anything. Um, or not just about anything, anything. And, and um, you know, some of my filmmaking heroes, the Duplass brothers, Sean Baker, Joe Swanberg, are, are guys um, that have that kind of mentality. And that's that, you know, regardless of what I have to do or learn how to do or figure out to get this thing to the finish line, I'm just going to figure the fuck out and do it. And, 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 you know, I think some people start doing this stuff thinking, oh, I'm, I'm a director or I'm, you know, a writer director and, I can't handle the producing side of it, or I don't want to handle the producing side of it. And, you know, I, to make stuff at the no to low budget level, you cannot have that mentality. You have to be willing to learn how to do and to actually do every single part of the process. So the fifth and final thing would be the sheer amount of time it takes to <laughs> take a feature film from concept to asses sitting in front of the screen uh, watching it and you know just as an example All God's Creatures I started writing in June of 08 and it was on store shelves through our distributor in May of 2012 so that was nearly a four year window that me and three other guys the figureheads on the project uh, worked tirelessly for no money to make this thing happen and you know had I had known that going into it how much time and effort that would that would take, uh, I might not have done it. <laughs> uh, I hope that's not the case. I hope I still would have done it. But I, I, you know, I, I guess it's, it's it's important to know that going into it that it is a ridiculously long road <laughs> to get a feature film made and out there. And um, to do so, you really need to love the story that you're trying to tell and and. You know, that is probably, of all these things, the most important component um, to have in place before you walk into the process is to really give a shit about telling the story because there's no telling the number of obstacles you're going to have to overcome to make that happen. Um, so don't make some shitty film that you wouldn't want to sit in a theater and watch. Uh, make sure it's something you care about because that is going to be what carries you through those really, really shitty nights <laughs> where everything, the sky is falling. Um, 
Yeah, so those are the five things that I wish I'd have known before I made my first feature with no money. Now go make your fucking thing.